right, hi guys. Um, today's uh, lesson is not gonna be that long because I'm not assigning any new writing. I basically want everyone to finish the old writing. And then today I wanted to show you, I am basically a Renaissance queen. So here's my costume for today. Um, so there you go. I will go ahead and post the pictures and all that uh, in Google Classroom for you. Now, so today though, what I do want to go over because I seem to get essays that are informative and I need them to be argumentative. So what I wanted to do, so I did a PowerPoint showing you the difference between the two. So let me go get that PowerPoint for you. Again, this is probably not gonna take as long as usual, I don't think. Let me get it for you. Uh, I hope everyone's doing okay. So um, also on that note, the outfit I'm wearing is uh, from the time period that I've been reading Macbeth from, the Renaissance period. Um, so just thought you might as want to know that. So let's talk about argument of essay versus informative essay. And I know some of you have turned them in, which I appreciate that. So all the ones turned in this week are going to be late, but I still want them. All right, so let's make that clear. So let's go on into argumentative essay versus informative essay. Now there are definitely similarities between these two. So let me go over what each one requires and then I'll actually tell you basically what is the fundamental differences between the argumentative and the informative. Your argumentative essay, the most important thing you have to understand is you must argue for or against an idea or concept. It's not an argumentative essay if you don't argue a point, if you're not trying to convince me how I should think of a certain subject or topic. All right, so it does need a thesis statement or a claim. That's your argument. What are you going to be talking about? Does need a basic five paragraph minimum. That does not mean you can't have a six paragraph. You can, but it needs to at least have five paragraphs. And that would include your introduction paragraph your three body paragraphs and your closing paragraph. Does have to have sources, meaning where did you get your information defending your point? Did you get it? What website did you get it from? What newspaper article did you get it from? Uh, what magazine article did you get it from? What, um, what's a, like a YouTube thing? I don't know, what YouTube resource did you get it from? Okay, now topic sentence and supporting evidence. Each of your body paragraphs needs to have a topic sentence with supporting evidence for your argument, which was your thesis statement. Okay, and again, I already went over introduction and closing paragraph. It also needs a counterclaim where you argue the other side and then against it, and the hook. So the hook is the very first thing you'll put in your introduction paragraph where it draws your reader in. So this again was a statistic, a fact, a story, um, what else? It can actually even be a personalized story if it's relevant. So what makes your reader want to read your essay besides your teacher who has to correct it? Okay, so now let's go on to informative essay. So informative essay or explain or inform about an idea or concept. You don't have to argue anything. You just have to explain about it. Okay, give people information. It still should have some sort of claim so people know what you're going to be talking about. Like are you going to be talking about Nazi Germany's in World War II, like you need to touch your audience know what you're exactly gonna be talking about. Again, still five paragraph minimum, still need sources. You can't just tell me what your thoughts are without telling me where you got this information. Where, what, if you're an inform someone, you should have some sources for this. Topic sentences, again, for your body paragraphs. Again, an introduction paragraph or a closing paragraph. So this is gonna be your informative essay. As a rule, your informative essay is slightly easier because you are just relaying information. You're not arguing for or against something. Okay, so you don't need to necessarily use persuasive speech. You don't need to use ethos, pathos, and logos to try and convince someone. So what I did is I did items they both have, okay? Items that they both have are a claim or a thesis statement. What are you going to be talking about? They both need to have at least five paragraphs. They both have to have sources. They both have to have an introduction and closing paragraph. They both have to have topic sentences 
for the uh, body paragraphs, okay? Now, that being said, here's where they differ. Items they don't share. You will notice under informative essay, I wrote nothing. Because really the big differences come under argumentative essay. Your argumentative essay is going to have a counterclaim, which is what I went over like two lessons ago. You're arguing against the opposite side. You're gonna present the opposing viewpoint to your argument, and then you're going to argue against it. Also a hook. You don't necessarily need a hook for an informative essay. Um, it, does, it doesn't hurt. You could still use one to draw your per person in, but the per argument, it, was, it is very, very important because you are actually potentially trying to persuade someone to your point of view. So you need to draw them into your essay. Now, a position or on a topic or idea. Position meaning you are fighting for or against something. Okay, and that's very important. And that is your fundamental difference between an argumentative and informative essay. You actually have a position on the topic that there is an opposing position, okay? If you just tell me and explain to me about Nazi Germany in the 1940s, um, like 1930s, 1940s, during World War II, you're not arguing a position, okay? You are just informing me about that, those details, that situation, that time period. And that's something you need, guys need to remember. You're not arguing, you're informing. In an argument of you have to argue a point. So those of you who have not turned in your essay, it's very important that you put this into your essay. If you've turned an essay into me and you realize it's only an informative essay, you need to fix it. It does not mean you have to change everything, but you're going to have to change some of the wording. You're probably going to have to change your thesis statement. You're going to have to correct it. So I am going to look at the essays and first of all, tell you if it's an informative argumentative and then we'll go from there. Okay, because I, I do see too many people giving me informative when it should be an argumentative. So that's going to be, that's today's lesson, basically. Now, I will have this actually there for you guys to look at. And the other thing I did want to discuss is, so I'm still having you guys practice run-on sentence correction and word-dependent sentence forming. So um, I actually put them together this time. And the run on the run on sentence correction does use a dependent words to fix them. So I want you guys to really practice those skills because I see sentences that are just not formed correctly. Also, I'm still seeing people do lazy things like not um, putting their eyes in uppercase, their eyes not in uppercase. Um, and when I'm having you practice sentence structure, it is very important you do the exact correct extension sentence structure. So if it, that structure requires a comma, you've got to put the comma other it's wrong. And that's very important. So that's why you guys are going over the same thing that you guys have been going over, okay? Uh, we are finishing up like Beth uh, this, this time around. I'm going to read a few more pages and we'll be done with that story. Um, I do want to actually say uh, what a climax is. So because I'm asking you about the climax of the story. So the climax of the story is when everything comes to a head. It's basically almost the end of the story, not quite. There'll be a little bit after that. But this would be like, for example, um, if you have a superhero story, this is when the superhero fights the main villain 10 minutes before the movie's over. That's the climax. When does everything that's been happening come to like a big important thing, like a fight, like an argument, um, so when does that conflict basically come to the point where it has to be resolved? So that's what the climax is. So I want you guys to figure out what the climax is, of Macbeth is, and it will be in what I read today. Okay. So that should make it clearer for you. All right. Um, hopefully this is, this all makes sense to you. And again, one more week for your essay. They are late this week but I wanna get more essays in. So if you did turn it in last week, excellent work. You did it on time, thank you. And that actually, I have started putting more and more grades in, um, particularly I know I finished second. Uh, tomorrow my focus will be the rest of you guys to put in your grammar grades and all your Macbeth grades, and then I'm gonna move on to essays, okay? So just give you a heads up on what's going on there. 
All right, guys. So, and just a reminder, Zoom meeting tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Be there. I'll be announcing on Parent Square like I have been.